All right, let's let's see Doublelift's take. What he agrees and disagrees with during the LCS walkout. <laughs> we need to talk about the whole the walkout. Don't worry, it's about to be I'll, good. I'll just read questions from chat, I guess. Do I agree with the walkout and the demands? Um, okay, so let me let me let me go through the walkout and the demands, and I'll 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 let you guys know. Blink twice if you're being held against your will. Nah. Why do I personally care about the demands? Okay, so these are the two questions I I saw that I really like. So I mean, let's just go through the timeline, okay? Riot killed the tier two scene. I'm gonna call amateur or academy tier two because it's the easiest way represented okay tier one is the highest level within that region that's lcs or lck and then tier two is a level below that feeds into tier one okay and you can be demoted and, and promoted you know between these two because it's still competitive it's just a level below so riot killed tier two and they did in my opinion a really bad job bro why is the audio so, so fucking ways, shit with how they approached it so they didn't give anyone any notice if you're going to make a decision like that, that's going to that affect so many people's lives. People who've signed leases, people who've made plans, Bro, it's really... people who've like situated themselves in a certain My place, expecting a bit too their good. contract to to ride out to the to, to the remainder. Like there's no there's no sign that like tier two is going to be killed, and then all of a sudden you know all their lives are just completely uprooted and disrupted. It's like it's pretty fucked up. Like I don't care what really people say, it's still pro players, right? Like this is the weirdest thing for me still. It's like, why on earth is not the demands to make these people whole? That's like, that should be like the number one thing. Make these people whole. The people that got fucked out of their contracts. That should be the number one priority. Because everyone agrees that the NSCL mandate is shit. Everyone agrees. Everyone agrees that the mandate is terrible. Make these people whole. Make them whole. Make the people that got the rug pulled in the middle of a season that lost their job and make them whole. That should be the number one priority. That's the only thing that I feel where morals takes any sort of stand here. Like they're just, they're amateur players, but they're still professional players. And definitely you deserve at least some level of like warning that your entire scene is going to be uh, exterminated. Do I think that amateur... Uh, or like, you know, tier two scene with, with challengers or what is it called? NACL? I mean, I think this is fair. This is a fair point to make. But also, if you're not an idiot and you're playing in Academy and you're seeing, damn, we're getting paid pretty good over here, bro. Like, there was Academy players that they were making 400k in like 2020. If things are going that well, and then you look at the stream and you look at the viewership and you look at the hype and you watch like the Path to Pro Twitter account tweeting out that they have a match going live and there's three likes on the tweet if you're yeah this is fine and all just because someone it's like just because someone has like managed to go to get a contract right they got a contract where they are supposed to get paid a certain amount just because that amount is too big i don't think that justifies the idea of them not not get being whole like made whole you know like let's say let's say I I don't know the I don't know the facts right about all of these players that that lost their contract I don't know the facts but imagine let's say you went pro you quit school and then in the middle of the split it's like okay you you are going to you're going to uh, pretty much uh, let's say leave all all your stuff behind you're going to move to a certain location because you have a contract in your hand that is going to guarantee your salary for the next two years and 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 I think that's that's the power where things can get messy. Do they deserve that money? 100% I fucking... I think the NSCL is garbage. And I think the, the mandate shouldn't be in place because the teams were spending way too fucking much money on something that gave nothing. I, 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 I agree 100% with the sentiment that the NSCL is not worth the investment. And there is no incentive to, to create that investment. There's no incentive. That incentive needs to be created. So I agree with Dom. Somebody of, like decent awareness you should know that things are not going well and that you know you're on thin ice with the whole situation in general like you're i think what dom says as well can be applied to the lcs as well i think this can be applied to the lcs and i think it can be applied to the lec in regards to some certain players that are being overpaid too your job could probably not exist pretty quickly this was good no, I think it was completely dog shit. Actually, I think the fact that the shittiest academy players are getting paid like 
uh, you know, 70k and upwards, the worst academy players. The fact that the, the scene had almost no viewership, but it was getting constantly pumped money into, just created so many problems. A lot of teams didn't want to be in it, but they're forced to be in it. That's not competitive. There's no competitive integrity in forcing teams to field rosters that they don't care about or want because they know that like yeah, the bottom it's, line it's, is they're not going to make any money on it. Agreed. They're not incentivized to care about it because there is nothing, there's no skin in the I game just want to do so my... I think the fact that teams are being forced to have academy teams was always a stupid idea. Maybe there was a time where all 10 teams were willing and, and like they wanted it, but then as soon as a, a, multiple teams don't want that requirement, which happened five years ago, I don't think that should, it should have been a requirement. I think there would have been a way better system, okay. natural selection. Like, it's it's competitive environment. So there's a whole bunch of problems. There's too much money in it. it okay, the Dar much. <laughs> there's no returns. People Darwinian are, approach. I like, like it. Created all these money in it. Okay, the like, it's it's competitive environment. So there's a whole bunch of problems. There's too much money in it. Okay, the Dar <laughs> there's no returns. People Darwinian are, approach. I like, like it. Created all these problems. Like you guys hear about like contract jail for a lot of academy players. Um, if you're an org and you're taking the other side of the contract jail is the reason why these players were taking these contracts that had enormous buyouts is because there was enormous payouts as well. The reason that like Ken V's buyout was so high and Tenacity's buyout was so high was because they were getting paid so fucking well to be in Academy yeah. so that like it was the only way the orcs could protect them. I heard how much money both of these homies are making and you guys would be mind blown. Selves when they're handing out that amount of money for an Academy player. So to be honest, it, it is what it is. Like if it just goes with the contract that you're signing. It's not like these players are making. If so much money is in it, there is no much money in it. It's like, let's say you have a company that generates no fucking revenue. And then you're putting in money out of pocket into that company. And it's just, the money is just leading to nothing. It's like a lot of orgs were spending money on players they believed was the future of the LCS. And then they weren't. 70k a year and their buyout is like 2 million or something. You know? Yeah, I think I think this whole idea that players are being hostages is really like troll. I think it's such a silly thing to say. I think it's like it's like even in the case of of like reckless, right? That's like the most high profile case of him getting fucked by G2, right? But it's like he knew what the fuck he was signing, right? At some point, like you need to it's like the responsibility is in the hands of both, right? The responsibility is in the hands of both. It's like players need to know what the fuck they're signing. And there are certain contingencies that are in place. A contract is basically, basically an agreement of what needs to be honored. It's like orgs take hostages of players all the time. There's definitely cases, for example, when Kanavi was signed for five years with Griffin. And he was just like, they really, really like bullied the fuck out of him because they knew he didn't know. Yeah, that's very predatory. You know, that, that's not what was happening. You're spending 300, 400, 500K, and I'm not making these numbers up. Like that, that is actually very normal to spend like 300 to 500K per on your academy team. That's like a, honestly a minimum. Then how are you going to make any of that money back? You're not going to make it back. Sponsors don't give a fuck about academy doesn't matter if you have the best academy team that's not adding any value to your sponsorships okay yep. that's so because no one's just watching throw it. that out of the window you're not making any money off additional fans either there are no fans of for example cloud nine because their academy team is doing well so how are you monetizing this uh situation that you're forced yourself that you've been forced into realistically guys it's by contract jailing and and having ridiculous bouts on your players so like if you are in the in academy the way you're going to recoup that money is by selling your best players to an org uh and you're going to sell this academy players contract that goes for like 60k for like 500k because that is the only way that you can even be remotely breaking even for that year in academy so how is that good for anybody if i was an academy player personally i would feel like this fucking sucks if i join a team and i do well there's a pretty high well, chance well i'll tell you the way, way the way you're supposed to recoup that money is you're supposed to be developing players for your own team and you take academy at a loss in order to create like a better team for yourself and then you're supposed to develop that talent go international have your new players pop off gain fans because of that new revenue streams potentially like a deep run at worlds makes yeah. the league more popular yeah. than more people are that's how that's how these 
academies are being used in the context of any traditional sport. Like you're supposed to off like offset the costs of academy with your main team because you are investing in your future. This is what happens in the LCK. They lost the ruler, Genji, and now they have Pays. And Pays, what a fucking talent Pays is, right? Genji is a great example of doing it right. T1 is a great example of doing it right, right? Or watching LCS, then you just like gain more revenue from the LCS itself. Like that's the, the idea. Like, I don't think you're supposed to be running Academy profitably. You're supposed to be trying to create more value for your own team in the future team is going to be willing to let me go is for a ridiculous buyout which is going to dilute the roster that i'm on by taking away their budget or just completely block my chances of joining an lcs team because that is the only way for the for the team to make it financially make sense to let me go that sucks the only the only reason that you would be happy as an academy player which is a pretty big one is like yeah the paycheck so you know with all that being said i thought the old system was complete uh it was a complete failure but i think the new system that Riot proposed is just as bad and it's not acceptable i do think that tier two actually does matter you know <laughs> i love that they're showing tenacity like that man <laughs> this is the the poster boy of getting bank in academy <laughs> no, i played with buzio i played with tenacity these players came up from academy oh they shit wait <laughs> this is buzio i for some reason bro <laughs> my academy. bad i think it's important that there is a tier two scene also for community my like, bad what is, it, what is the word i'm looking for like it's just like optics you know like people say why why would i care about lcs when when lcs you know riot doesn't care about the future of the league because they're not supporting tier two it just feels like shit um i don't think any you know lcs players should be happy with that because it just makes our league look even more of a joke you know international performances bad but then also like we're the only region without a tier two scene that's just gonna kill people's hype for our league like even harder lcs academy filled with washed up pros i mean that's because 10 teams are required to field an academy team and there are not really like 50 good amateur players to be honest it, like I said, it's like people just didn't really care about, like, the teams don't really care. <laughs> they just went, it's like, get us some clips of washed up pros. <laughs> we got, like, we got <laughs> Ryoma, we got Tommy, we got Smoothie, we got Gansu. God damn, they didn't have even have to look that hard. About having a strong academy team or not. If anything, academy existed just to have, like, a, like a potential like, backup for your main roster, you know? I just don't think it's, like, serving the purpose that people really wanted Academy to serve. Let's see what the LCSPA came back with. Okay, so the talks started between Philip and I was in pretty constant communication with Philip before the vote. These are the demands. And when I read the demands, I was honestly uh, a little bit disappointed because I feel like these demands are either unreasonable or just like not the right way of- uh, Wait, what the boy? He's going in like that? Wait, double it. <laughs> Early. Thank you for the video. <laughs> Thank you for the video. And I agree. I agree. <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait, he's saying that. Wait, doesn't this just completely kill the LCSPA's like complete <laughs> negotiating power? The whole thing that the LCSPA was supposed to be doing is like, we got all of our players together, strength in numbers. We're going to deny labor. <laughs> And because of us denying labor, you're going to be forced to make a decision. And then he just comes here and he's like, actually, I don't even give a fuck with you about these, like, these LCSPA ass. I don't even care about It's like, the thing is, what he's saying is true. It's like, a lot these fucking demands, I think they're pretty terrible. I think they're pretty terrible. It's like, allow LCS Oaks to partner with affiliates for cost sharing. That is already allowed. Riot guarantees LCS minimum contracts with the following year for the five players who win the LCS Summer Finals each year. That's terrible. Institute a 3-5 to five roster continuity rule. I don't think this fucking matters at all. Institute a Valorant type promotion and relegation between the LCS and NACL. I don't think this saves anything. Like, I, like the thing is, it's like already LCS is at such a economic, economical downturn and you want to further dilute uh, the value of uh, the orgs. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's completely crazy. About uh, these, you know, requests by the LCSPA. And in two weeks, I'm just going to be down to play LCS again. So, like, what? 
<laughs> Fuck, I love Double M, bro. I love Double M. <laughs> Shit. How base is this guy? Coming to the table with something that everyone should want. Valorant style promotion relegation. What does Valorant style mean? This does not mean that players, uh, that teams can be kicked out of tier one. This yeah. really means. This that means that. So the Valorant style is they add in optional slots. But you wouldn't actually. You might be thinking promotion and relegation means the bottom two teams in LCS can be relegated out of LCS. Well, then where did their $10 million investment go? They pay $10 million, hand that over. Can't just, the Bright can't just take their $10 million and be like, okay, bye bye. Like you lost to fucking. Tyler One's Academy, like, amateur team. That's not what Valorant Star Promotion Relegation is. Valorant Star Promotion Relegation... And I like to reinforce here. I think franchising is terrible. I like the... I like the dirty... Dirty qualification. Uh, I think franchising sucks. But... Rug pulling the franchising right now is, is not a thing. Like, that will literally kill LCS. Relegation is... The league would expand to two more teams, and those two teams, yep. so instead of 10, it would be 12, and those two extra teams would come from tier two. And those two spots, for let's say, you know, it's a 12 team year. Top academy teams play with their two teams. This Valorant style promotion and relegation, you have now devalued the slots of the else. They split fucking money at all. I'm telling you, the strikes should have happened in season three, the strikes should have happened in season eight. Make it to Worlds. And that's, that's it. a Valorant style promotion relegation. Actually, in Valorant, tier two teams can make it to Worlds. That's pretty crazy, right? So that's pretty cool. You and your four challenger or your four bronze friends can make a team, and you can make it all the way to Worlds if you're good enough. That is a comp that is competitive. I love that idea. Now, yeah, practice, super cool. This is actually pretty shit because think about it. The bottom team. Valorant is correcting all of the mistakes that League of Legends did. And LCS already don't. Dis I think that <laughs> Wait, that was they paid ten million dollars a long time ago, and they checked out like four or five years ago. Don't deserve to be here anymore. They paid ten million dollars because think about it. The bottom teams in LCS already don't deserve to be here anymore. They paid ten million dollars a long time ago, and they checked out like four or five years ago. <laughs> I think that, Wait, already that was literally right when it started. Okay, base. I mean, that's that's his take on it. Shit, respect. <laughs> Too many teams in the league, and there's not even fifty LCS level players in the region, including imports. So why would we want to even further dilute the league by adding two even worse teams? In my opinion, the, it's the opposite that needs to happen. Instead of adding two spots, they need to somehow find a way to cut two teams from the league. I think that LCS should have eight teams, and that would, you know, it's a supply and demand problem. There's too many spots, and there's not enough competitive teams to fill them. And that's why you have teams that are checked the fuck out. They're kind of coasting and they're ready to, they, they want to sell. I don't think that anyone in LCS wants to play. I don't think having less teams necessarily makes something less competitive. Because there is this element of individual creativity in a game that is ever changing. Where the idea of stars aligning for your own personal performance. The odds of that happening. Uh, obviously is rather slim, but having diversity in play can be important. With or against people who want to get out of the league. I think everything like, is correct. That's not a good environment to play in. Okay, so that's my opinion on that. I agree. I, just I kick TSM out. Don't even give them like a franchise <laughs> feedback or anything. Just kick TSM out for fun. Good take. I don't think, uh, I don't think this is reasonable at all. I, I, I don't think so. And secondly, you know, it's going to dilute the value of the 10 existing spots. That's what Riot said in their... Honestly... I think Riot should take two teams, sell their slots, use the money for uh, NA Academy, and also use that money to guarantee the contracts of some split winners. In their reply to this as well. Okay, so Riot commit to a revenue player. If, if they take the slots and sell them for, let's say, uh, an undervalued price, let's say 15 million, 15 million a pop, then they can run Academy. They can run Academy for like... Four, five. Oh. Hey, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, dude? Um, I'm doing great, man. I got I got another one coming, bro. I did a, another reaction today. <laughs> it's more fun to watch you <laughs> with your reaction in between. Is the series already starting? Uh, they're just like they're walking on the stage doing the walkouts. Okay. The, not okay. the LCS walkouts like they're. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Okay, I'm gonna continue watching you react to uh, to double it just a little bit longer, and uh, I will join you. Perfect. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs>
player pool of uh, player salaries for 300k per NACL team per year. I'm open to being wrong on this, but my like very like hot take on this is 300k per NACL team means a minimum, a minimum of 60k per. Nope, that math is correct. Double lift. I got you. I ran the numbers. 300k divided by five, six. Yep. Nope. I don't think the best player in the league. You know, I, I put that in quotes because it's not actually like that. Like, yeah, true. There's like streamers that are probably better than those players, etc. No, I 100% get them here. There's like nepotism. There's like people you know. Let's just say you're the you're as a obviously a reasonable floor. I don't know what the reasonable floor is. Like in my head, it'd be like 30k per player. But having the ability to make like up to like 100k per year if you're really fucking good. What happened to tournaments with actual prize pool? Like, why can't tier two be tournaments? with prize money where the players can win Think Riot would allow a, that? a lot of money and it, it's highly motivating. It's highly fucking motivating when you enter a competition and and $20,000 in your in your pocket is on the line. Yeah, I'm I'm like a pretty big believer in that personally. I think it would be fun for the viewers to watch. I also think this is like a pretty contentious topic, but I think that when you when you that you could be relegated at any point and you're going to have to fucking go back to school two years behind the rest of your classmates because you're going to have to. What really motivated you is knowing that you could be relegated at any point and you're going to have to fucking go back to school two years behind the rest of your classmates because you spent a couple. Honestly, most of our most of us old heads, we are so fucking battle worn in a way where it's like we are ready for everything to be disappearing tomorrow for us. So we are so willing to put in the hours because we've become best friends with this fear of losing it all because that was our life. Season 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Every season, that was our life. <laughs> we are so battle worn, dude. Because the craziest thing is, you know, me, Dom, Doublelift, we've had so many like old teammates, old friends, old mates that are just gone. <laughs> They're gone, dude. They have, they are nothing. They are not working with league anymore. I don't want to go back to studying or some shit, but CBA, mate. A couple years doing this esports, you know, idea and it didn't end up working out. Fear of homelessness. Yes. Now that is a key motivator. Yes. Academy. There's actually more negatives to being promoted to LCS than positives. Think about it. Right now. Or I mean, Doublelift is speaking from a place of insane privilege. No, Doublelift is like say what you want about Doublelift, but his his early years, he was straight up fucking gangster, dude. It's like in his early years, bro, bro had nothing. Bro had nothing. Say what you want, like double lift, like double lift is really like inting LCSPA here, right? Uh, but maybe this, maybe, maybe this video is just his gangster way. Maybe his, this is his gangster way of saying, yo, I want to play summer no fucking, no matter what. This might just be my last split that I play. I want to fucking try to qualify the worlds. Fuck this shit. If we walk out, maybe this is his gangster way, you know? Maybe this is his gangster way of just taking a big shit on LCSPA. <laughs> Maybe. Now, or one year ago, I shouldn't say right now, a year ago, two years ago, if you're an academy player, you have a cushy job and you're getting paid like 70 or 80K a year, up to like 100, maybe 100K a year, right? If you're a good academy player. I think that there are a lot of players that have flickered in and out of the bottom tier of LCS. When they get promoted from that academy position, they come into LCS and it's like test time. And they could be good, but most of the time they get completely ran down and they're not LCS level. And then their value drops dramatically afterwards. Like they, their value drops like crazy afterwards because people saw them perform poorly in LCS. Why risk it? Like why risk getting promoted to LCS when you could just take the guaranteed cushy um, academy salary? Like I, I actually, I just know that that is like an attitude held. The by money, the money in the in the not to include it is too much. In LCS is so much For sure, it's too it much. In Bro, the money in LCS is too much. Academy. So that was the old system, I guess. I think at this point, Doublelift should make his own demands. And he should rally the players and make his own association. He should just make his own demands. I think that's the move. I'm rambling right now because it, it, within the new system, I don't think it would really be an issue. It's just, I, like I said, I think 300k per team is like a little bit high. 
Allow LCS orgs to partner with affiliates for cost sharing. <laughs> I think Riot <laughs> What's the revenue from NACL? It's a good idea. Basically what that means, to split the cost, but also to like split the benefits. Dip their toes into tier two. Riot guarantees LCS minimum contracts for the following year for five players who this win is garbage. LCS summer finals each year. This kill is garbage. Like, <laughs> Dude, start... this one was insane, bro. I, was like, <laughs> I want W to kill this shit. Where did they get this one? Like, yeah, and if you win, you can just like, uh, just think about, could this not be exploited at all? Like you're just guaranteed a contract for the whole next year, but you don't actually have to fucking play well. You could just run it down on purpose, be doing other shit. Like, what, is, what does that mean? I started questioning. Bro, like, if, you, if you win summer split, guys, you get a one year paid vacation. What does that mean? So then I had to clarify. There's what nothing what more NA that than that. Five academy players who There's win nothing more NA than that, let's be honest. Job. For the next draft is on? Okay. Next year. All right, let's I was continue, so guys. curious, like, who <laughs> wanted this rule? Is it like the, you know, the Academy Champions C9? Like, I'm not trying to point fingers. Like, I, I, I just, like, don't understand, like, who wants this rule? Wait, is that even Academy? Because I read this as, L as Riot guarantees LCS minimum contracts for the following year for the five players who win the LCS finals each year. What, what part of this is Academy? I didn't even know that this was Academy as well. Same. I assumed I, that this was just LCS minimum contracts if you win LCS finals. It's a free market. You can be completely hard carried to uh, winning Academy finals. It's a competitive market. I don't think anyone should be guaranteed a contract. There are times where people win LCS. And, and they suck. Bro, Piotr just won Worlds. Like imagine <laughs> if he was just guaranteed a contract in LCK because he won. Like, I don't know the next the next year they don't have a team there are times where you know people win lec i think and they don't next year they don't have a team. I, I think like emperor and like hybrid had that happen to them it's a competitive market i don't know what to say if you're good you will be picked up instituted three-fifths roster continuity rule to provide players unreleased nacl rosters first priority in maintaining their spots okay so basically what this means is like you have this org your your name is fucking fred you made fred esports and <laughs> <laughs> Three fifths roster continu uh, continuity rule to provide players on released NACL rosters first priority in maintaining their slots in the upcoming NACL season if a majority continue to compete together. Freddy Sports. And uh, you have the roster. One too. And all those players won. Uh, those players uh, have a spot in NACL. And, uh, you know, you're Fred and you're like, man, fuck these guys. I don't like them. So you kick all five of them. And you get five new players, and um, you still have that spot in NACL. Under this rule, those five players, if three out of five of them choose to stick together, they actually own that spot. Uh, to kind of prevent you from having, like, shitty ownership or to have a situation where, like, a team just completely nukes the whole team and... Uh, cool, then if they want that, then then the teams don't have to pay the fucking salaries. Then, then like, what's the point of having the organization, you know? Like, they can pay themselves salaries. If they want to own the slot. Spot. I don't know how to feel about that, to be honest. And because I, I don't feel strongly one way or the other, and I can see like an upside and downside, like I don't really, yeah, I don't really know. And I don't really care. Anyways, I talked to Philip about all these, and the, the funny thing is, you know, uh, as you can tell, I don't, I don't really fully agree with any of these, actually. I <laughs> um, only really agree with the affiliates cost sharing thing, and that, that thing is like already happened, so. <laughs> Wait, so all of them are, <laughs> Wait, so he's part of the walkout? <laughs> <laughs> he's part of the walkout he's like these are all garbage i'm standing with the garbage <laughs> nice, man. why did i vote yes on the walkout yeah exactly no answer this question bro like look at his face bro he knows he's he's like ah oh, shit he's fucking sweating. he's like why did i vote yes on the walkout like this is just horrible <laughs> why did overwhelming people vote yes actually I'll, I'll tell you guys a story of the day like the day uh, we're scrimming until eight every lcs team is scrimming and we have a meeting in 30 minutes and i'm, I'm looking at the lcs player association chat it's a discord channel and i'm thinking there is no fucking way that that even 26 people are going to show up you understand how lazy lcs players are after scrim you know how little they fucking care about academy <laughs> everyone's tired or hungry you think that a bunch of people are going to show up to this thing and we're going to have 26 out of 50 lcs players vote there's 15 koreans there's a shit ton of other imports i think they have less skin in the game they should care less just oh, naturally of course they should care less 100 percent agree with this Being from the region like yeah. understandable right like a lot of them don't even speak english yet perfectly i think to it's have 26 people even sh i think it's very important to underline all of this that every fucking party is acting in their own personal best interest and if you think about that as you analyze this whole process who is 
it's like, then you begin to see everything, you know? And it makes complete sense. It's like, if I'm, for example, Berserker, I'm on my last year of contract in NA, and then I'm considering playing in the LCK. Do you think I, do you think I would give a shit about North America fucking NACL? Show up is a fucking miracle. Okay, so I show up to this thing and I have my expectations really low. I'm thinking 10 people are going to show up, including my team. And I'm, I'm thinking, okay, you know, like maybe 10 or 15 people are going to show up. And it's even if we all vote yes, there's not going to be enough people even in this fucking meeting to um, make anything happen. And like, sure enough, the Discord server fills up fucking fast. So fast. And I'm thinking like, what is going on? This is crazy, like how many people are here. And then we do a head Turn count, up, dude. A head count, and we are 46 out of 50 players are here. 46 LCS players, like it's, that's just insane to me. Like, how is this possible that 46 out of 50 players showed up? The last four people trickle in, I think. And, and it's just all 50. Literally all players showed up to the meeting. I was absolutely amazed. If you ask- Honestly, I'm quite amazed too. I'm not gonna lie. I'm quite amazed that 50 players just showed up. That's pretty insane. Me to bet something, I would have- I <laughs> Bro, the LCSPA must be so fucking pissed with this video. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Philip Aram, like, saw it's like double up to streaming. Like he got like some fucking Discord message, like double up to streaming. Double up to streaming and he is like saying that he, that like all of our demands are bullshit and he also <laughs> wants to play in two weeks. You know, Philip Aram was watching this stream like, fuck, double it, turn it off. He was like, he was like the, the Walter White in the car just screaming <laughs> when the stream was happening. Walter. What the hell? Walter. I would bet my life savings, actually. Yeah, I would have bet my life savings that n there's no way all 50 players are going to show up. Maybe this is what 26 do, right? For the majority, you know, all 26 vote yes, but all 50? Like, what the fuck, bro? That was crazy. And so, you know, I was I was like, this is, something's going to happen. Like, I could feel the magic in the air that night. I was like, something's <laughs> going to happen here. I did not expect this at all. I don't think anyone expected this. I think Philip was like, what the fuck? There's, like, way more people here than I expected. Like, players are so lazy. Yeah, that's the story of how I lost all my life savings. <laughs> so, anyways, you know, the vote okay. happened. It was overwhelming. I'm not going to say what the vote was. Wait. My man didn't explain why he voted yes. So, he voted yes because there were so many people in the call. Because the question was, why did I vote yes for the walkout? It's like, yo, dude, I was surprised that so many be many people turn turned up. It was, it he was felt the oh. magic in the night, dude. <laughs> Overwhelming majority. I walked out of that meeting feeling like pretty happy. We walked out of that meeting and, and everyone was... I think I think it was there's a little bit of tension, I feel like. But I, I wanted to say one oh, thing, oh, which oh, is gonna I tell don't us? think... There's a world where LCS just like continues as normal. Like how much of a joke would it be if you guys watched LCS? LCS just starts. The stream starts. The players walk out. There's like no, like the casters have to ignore that happening. There's like no coverage of it. And then the games get played between like 50 bronze players. How is that <laughs> going to happen? Like just explain it to me, guys. Like who who's going to want that to happen? Bro, I would want that shit to happen, bro. I would co-stream the fuck out of that. Same, I'd be like, dude. this is my region, baby. This is what it's became. <laughs> I kind of I kind of like uh, we we're talking about like doomsday scenarios. Like, okay, what happens I think it's kind of weird. Why did they make this public? Like, why did they make the thing public, right? Because if, if there was supposed to be a walkout, don't you do it on the day of? And basically you just stand up and you say, fight the power. Holy, my bicep is looking massive, bro. Pshew when you know if there's like defectors what happens if we're, we're like getting pressured to because it's like the only leverage the lcspa had was the fact that uh rug pulling the players that were in academy on these ridiculous contracts that that was like fairly negative you know? you're placed on lcs day i'm like guys there's like no way lcs is gonna happen to me i think it's an empty threat that riot was like looking at the teams to replace the their rosters with like scabs. Yeah, that was an it's empty for threat. Worlds, by the way, summer split is for worlds. You that shit was really true. Like the fact that Riot like even suggested this was really true. You're gonna say the the standings for worlds the first week of LCS. You, like you know what it feels like? <laughs> you know what this like LCS walkout and strike feels like? It's like when you would take classes in school and you do like mock trials. 
where you'd like pretend to be on a track, but it's like there was nothing actually on the line. But like you would do this this like whole like you know walkthrough where you would have everyone play the role that you would in a courthouse. This is what it feels like to me. This doesn't Damn, feel real. Mock trials in like America in school. Of the regular season games is oh, played fuck by just are they doing in school, dude? Mock trials. Like, I don't think so. And then Riot came out with that response. I don't think at this point you guys probably already read the response. LCS ended up getting pushed it's back. It's Model weeks. UN, yeah. Ultimately, uh, it's not really up to me. Uh, I I voted yes. So let me actually. I never explained exactly like what you didn't I'm standing it. for. I guess what I think we all voted on is not these bullet points. I don't want to speak for everyone, what? but my feeling <laughs> is that we didn't vote on these bullet points. We didn't okay. say yes. We support. That is big, by the way. I like for all of these bullet if points. If this is true, right? If this is just what LCS PA said and and just hijacked the vote to legitimize it, LCS PA is looking really fucking bad here, honestly. We want Riot to support the tier two scene, not not kill it, basically. Just um, and especially in the way that they killed it with no. Yeah, no, they like the LCS players are like, hey, we should. We, we care about those academy players. You guys should know that we care about those academy players. And then Riot is like, okay, well, maybe we're just going to delete LCS and you guys won't go to Worlds. And then we'll see how much you care about it. And then they're like, no, 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 just kidding. Just kidding. We just want to play LCS. It was a solid two weeks. Everyone got their shit together. But yeah, we were just joking with that whole thing. We, we care about them, just not that much. Like, we don't, we don't want to actually lose anything for those motherfuckers. So, hey, just start up LCS in two weeks. We'll pretend, let bygones be bygones, and you know. No, if 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 for some reason, right, if these if these demands weren't a part of like the vote in the walkout, then like the LCS PA, I think that's really like fucked. You're not it's just because you agree to walk out doesn't mean that you're going to blindly agree with any terms the LCS PA sets. Because the terms are honestly garbage. I said that on day one. Um, yeah, you can even cut our salaries if you want. Like, it's going to be a completely different thing, bro. It's so much different. Notice with no discussion. And in fact, just lying to Philip's face about it. Lying to the Players Association and getting away with that. We needed to take a stand. I'm surprised. I'm not like super welling with pride. Like, oh my God, this is like a revolution. But like, I'm honestly just pretty surprised that... Uh, like we're just sitting here in the comfort of our keyboards, guys. Like we're not actually like doing anything. <laughs> the comfort of our keyboards. Um, so you know, people are like, "Man, so that's brave." That's the like, saying. So based. That's the saying. I, we're sitting at our keyboards. We have our headsets on. We're listening to Philip talk, and he, you know, we we, we cast our vote. It takes five minutes. It's and, and, and ultimately, like what we're asking for isn't even really that crazy. It is that we want Riot to support the tier two scene. Okay, so so they're not actually asking for any of this. The way I don't, I don't really want to be part of the discussion of like oh, what no. that means. Yo, but also like that. Right. Shout out to all of the homies in the in in my YouTube comments that said, "Yamaro, you don't know how a strike negotiation works. They they over ask for things and then they meet halfway. This is how you do a negotiation. It's like what the fuck are you even saying, mate?" <laughs> Shouldn't be able to make changes like that that kills people's jobs with no notice Mate. and with no discussion. Yeah, that's why we took a stand. I think I'm doing a pretty bad job of explaining it. But that's just a few of the reasons, I guess, that... Uh, I think you did a great job it. of explaining it, Double Lift. I love everything you said in this. Yes. What about the team owners? Uh, I don't know if I made this clear enough, but I don't think that the teams should be forced to have academy teams. Yeah, that I don't think so That system benefited nobody, actually. I think that it's on riots to spend a small percentage of their money to support the tier two scene and not just kind of kill it as it is and then pawn it off to some random or they need to create heavy incentives dog shit name they need I to create really, incentives see, like, for like, the right like people to be involved team fish taco who like literally was like, a couple games away from actually just being in nacl by the way they like almost qualified that was the team with dardock on it and alarm i know that none of these players know this because they don't give a fuck about academy and i know uh, this is what, dude, if I were to be on a call of Philip Aram, the type of questions I would ask him would be so, I would just be like, hey, can you name me just like 10 out of the 80 NACL players? <laughs> like, just, just uh, their user, <laughs> like, you know, 10 of the 80 players? That would be the type of shit I would ask him because it's clear <laughs> they don't actually give a fuck. They just want to have more power because they have no power. In the bro, I have to say, Dom, with his camera, bro, it's it looks like he, when he's watching this white screen right now, it looks like he's getting, he, they are, he's being teleported to a different dimension right now, mate. The reason they have no power is because they're, they're not a union. 
they didn't pay to be part of the LCS the same way that, you know, the organizations had a franchise fee. So, yeah, I mean, if you're not putting any skin in the game, then you don't actually get a say. It is what it is. Into the NACL. Me and up, it's baby. like framed like we remain committed and like they killed it. Okay. They, they, they killed it. That's 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 all there is to it. They they basically just like dumped it in the street and they, they shot it for good measure. Somewhere in between the old system and that system is like one where Riot like can d still have a tier two scene exist. Did I watch that one say? I actually did not. And like, I don't know, this thing has been coming to like this really big issue where, uh, I, I guess like, and for those who don't I want to say uh, that I- Tyler One's video was pretty much, yo, uh, these fucking players that are getting paid in NACL, they are straight up, they don't fucking deserve it. That's, that's, that was his video. Care? But Yo, everything with Prime Gaming. If it's the option of standing by Academy and having LCS Summer Split be canceled, like Riot threatened, and just oh, he's just saying it, bro. He's just <laughs> saying it straight up. Oh my God, Double is so based. Situation. If I actually have to, like, if I lose something because of it, then fuck these motherfuckers. Like, who cares about Academy in the first place? Uh, I'm letting go. Like. I'm letting go of this situation. I'm I'm not like so holy shit, Dumbledore, bro. What are you doing, brother? What are you doing? Actually? What are you saying, <laughs> dude? He's just. I mean, he's one thing you can say is he's pretty honest. Yeah, I thank mean, you, everybody. Thank honest. you. I appreciate it. God damn, that's the conclusion. So gung ho about it that I'm willing to uh, not play Summer Split. So like when Riot threatened to go nuclear. That's a pretty big threat. Like, I think every player was a little bit affected by that. It's like, whoa, Riot's willing to cancel summer splits? I hope the negotiations go well. I, I, I'm, I'm just- How do you hell? No, you don't, bro. You just ruined the entire negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> it's a comedy video, actually. It's comedy. Oh my God. How are they going to go well now? You, you're the most important player. You're the one that has the most power. You think that that if if Riot knows that you're gonna fucking play, you think the other players are gonna be the ones that are gonna stand up? You think honestly, you think if, is if a rare wants in this to fucking world, play, this is fake the other bitches. import players <laughs> they don't even like they're not even from America. They're just here to have a fucking job, and then it's like, oh, you're gonna lose your job by the way because you know their LCS won't exist. You think those players are gonna su suddenly <laughs> stand up against Riot and be like, well, if that needs to be done, it needs to be done because we depend on this academy system we depend on these demands being met this is the only thing that's like you think no hell no bro <laughs> you just ruined everything just, i'm just telling you guys the truth you don't think that everyone knows that like it's just it, it is what it is guys it's like beating it yeah dude but you're not supposed to say it brother but well done because i course, agree cause like i think this whole thing i think it's it's like i said it's a mock trial an agreement that the old system sucked. The old system is not the way. I think let's find a new system where tier two can exist and there can be jobs in tier two and it's not on the teams, but. In my opinion, he said what he needed, what needs to be said. No, but it's like, it's like, imagine. So, so let's continue with the example that, 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 uh, that uh, Dom had, right? So it's like, basically there's a feud, right? Between two parties. Let's say they go to court and then it's like, Double lift is on one side with the walkout, and he just goes to the opposition and gives them all of the evidence. Because he's being true, honest, and based. Now, nah, blood. The opposition can maybe assume or maybe work with the idea that the players are afraid of this, and that was the leverage, but to confirm 100% that they are you lose whatever percentages you had. But then again, right? It's like, I thought it was already over, right? I thought it was already over the moment LCS said they slammed their balls on the table and said, yo, we're going to cancel LCS, right? When Riot said that, I thought it was done and over. Well, it is more of like a free market where, uh, out of nowhere, because somebody wanted to be an academy. They actively are seeking to compete in academy not forced to be in there and given a participation trophy, strapped down, kicking and screaming, like you need to find five players. Really hard to make his games exciting, right? He, are, he has done a great job. It's just one example. But, <laughs> what is happening? Like, Play the, the outro music. With support from Ryan. Cut him off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even.
even like he's not even done making his point and they just cued the outro music and it just, <laughs> it's this fucking song holy man this is too good love your mother reaction no back ladies and gentlemen we are reacting to dom's video it started off with double lift just saying he's brain dead or his take is brain dead sorry okay so obviously the tweet that he's referring to is probably mine that he put in the thumbnail it says that i have a brain dead take about <laughs> the lcspa so if you haven't caught up to this point essentially yeah dom, dom does this thing he's such a good storyteller because your his his voice is always like hmm so he says, I have a brain dead take. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's break this down. <laughs> he went out. Uh, he publicly released the YouTube video. I don't know why he's talking about this stuff publicly. I still haven't figured that part out. But he released the YouTube video where he talked about the LCS walkout. He hey, guys, do you think Double Lift is smart enough to be like shit if. I'm going to make sure that the LCS doesn't get cancelled by going publicly. You guys think that... <laughs> There's no way, bro. His, his track record is really, really, like, not, not, not it. Talked about what he agrees with, what he disagrees with, the reason that they're walking out, and he essentially in the video said that, like, he's... Least self reporter and a player. Play LCS if push comes to shove. Um, he's not going to be denying labor and taking. I think, a I think he's an actual genius. He's playing 9D Jenga on all of our foreheads. Damn. What if he's secretly just controlling the whole league and he was just playing like Puppet Master? A financial hit in order to. Uh, support the academy players and uh, stay with them during this walkout um, if the negotiations extend or if Riot just... That's the whole point of a strike. That's I, I thought the, the simple way of putting it, be willing to risk it all for more. That not that what a strike is? Be willing to risk it all for more. You're basically trying to make the argument that you deserve more. It is the same... Like imagine you're in a relationship and you set an ultimatum. You're like, if, if, this, if this doesn't change, then I no longer want to be a part of the relationship. It's, you set this ultimatum, right? And you, you put yourself in a position where if it continues, you're supposed to be willing to pull the plug. <laughs> says that they're going to potentially cancel the league, which is what they already threatened. So that's where you're at this point. So obviously everyone called him out. They're like, pretty stupid thing to say because right now you are walking out and your leverage is the denial of labor it's actually your only leverage in the situation because it's not like it's a franchise league but the teams are, are franchised the only power that you have in this situation is potentially not playing and he essentially gave that away in the last video so now we have to see why he's going to clarify you guys want to hear something crazy you guys want to hear a crazy idea on how to save the lcs okay Make like a salary cap of like 150, 150k. That's how you save the league. You want to save the league? You want to save the league? The thing is, it's like what's so twisted about this whole situation is that what's so twisted about everything, right? Is that in this negotiation, it, it, it's not one of those situations where like Starbucks is making billions and the CEO of Starbucks is just giving himself bonuses and all of all of the homies are sitting on big sacks of gold. Like the, the LCS Oaks are bleeding. They are bleeding. I don't know if you guys watched the Thorin video, but Thorin basically uh, made the point that the entire revenue share is not enough to pay for the player salaries it and why I am brain dead and why everyone else is brain dead as well because this is something that most people were confused about um, because obviously during the negotiations it's pretty bad to have a, 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 a the most popular player say that he is willing to play LCS if push comes to shove um, also it's why are you punishing players the players for being good there's such a large pool of pro players that they don't have to spend so much money on the best players or imports what do you mean punishing players for being good? What does that even mean? It's like obviously the, the, the salaries that are being paid in the LCS are extremely unhealthy. 
and for the long term it doesn't work at all it does, like their level of play doesn't matter that's the thing their level of play doesn't matter and if a player managed to get a fat ass contract god bless take your bag get your bag but for the health of the league it's terrible the argument as to why it's like people thought that the growth of the lcs would uh, continue and it would snowball into something massive and they thought that if they win championships and they're going to be competitive in the market that is being created they will be able to win championships and then they will snowball that into additional revenue uh, the idea was that, yo, uh, if we win a championship now, it's going to pay off uh, and pay dividend in the future, right? And that obviously didn't pay off. It's like the, the whole venture capitalist new ownership strategy was garbage. But now you have to look at things for what they are. And basically, it's like the, the player salaries just need to go down. Especially rich coming from Doublelift, because if you look at all the players in the LCS... He's one of the only players that could reasonably deny labor for an extended period of time and still be able to like support himself and still be completely okay. Most of the other players would potentially have to go back to school or get another job. I don't get how they make, don't make enough money from sponsors because they are spending too much. That's, that's what it is. They are spending too much or find something else to do where Doublelift can go back on a streaming career. He's one of the players that could stand out and deny labor um, and really make his stand for academy rights because of the fact that he obviously has a lot of money from his time playing in LCS and he actually has um, other career paths that he could easily jump to right now. Well, the guy who is the head of the Players Association messaged me after I posted the video and said thanks for the video. I really appreciate it. Dude, I, I still can't tell if Phil said this sarcastically or not, by the way. So he says that Phil went to him after and said, Hey man, thanks for the video. Really appreciate it. Like, <laughs> obviously, I don't know what Phil is supposed to say there. Like, he already made the fucking video. So there's no reason for Phil to be like, Double if you dumb motherfucker. You ruined everything. You're fucking over the whole LCSPA. I don't think that <laughs> Phil is going to say that in this situation because he still wants the players to kind of be on his side, even if they do stupid things. But uh, maybe Phil said that sarcastically to him and it just went over Double of said, hey, good job, Double of Thank you. You ruined everything. But hey, bro, we appreciate it. Thank you. So I have no idea why people think that I'm like harming the negotiations. I'll, I'll, I'll address some of the criticism about my video uh, real fast. I mean, I think it mm -hmm. doesn't help the Players Association like uh negotiations when i say that i i would not have lcs be canceled over academy but i don't think it hurts because it is not a negative in my opinion because no one wants that outcome anyways i don't think because <laughs> the whole movement fucking sucks anyways bro it was doomed it is not a negative that i i would not have lcs be canceled over academy but I don't think it hurts because it is not a negative, in my opinion, because no one wants that outcome anyways. I don't think Because <laughs> the whole movement fucking sucks anyways, bro. It was doomed from the start, which I kind of agree with. Maybe it doesn't hurt anything because you weren't winning this shit at the beginning no matter what. Like, there was, you had no leverage, and there was no world where the players, some of the most self-centered people you'll ever meet in your entire life, are gonna give up their fucking salaries and their jobs for academy players. Ain't no fucking way. Have you met pro players? Like, I wouldn't have done that shit if I was a pro player. I'm not trying to like say I'm fucking better than them or like, oh, I would stand with the academy. No, I wouldn't fucking do that shit. But I also wouldn't make YouTube videos like that go against the stand that I'm pretending to take. You know, it would be one of those things. I would probably be in there like most LCS players where they were convinced that, hey, this is the right thing to do. All that's going to happen, worst comes to worst, is you just, we don't play LCS for two weeks. Uh, you know, maybe you, you, you don't even, it's not even that you don't get paid because you're still getting paid. You just wouldn't get paid for game days, but you're going to get those later. So it's fine anyway. Maybe I would be in there if I was like a 21 year old LCS player. The, the difference is like, I would understand what the fuck is going on at least where I'm, I'm still not sure that double lift understands what's going on in this video so let, let's keep on let's keep on going we'll get into my notes in a second but i don't think he knows like what a 
what a strike is like what denial of labor is I'm, I'm not sure he actually understands what he is actively doing right now single player i don't think there's a single team They're not even riot not any player not any employee at lcs like it benefits nobody if that ends up happening so because riot came out with a statement with that threat that like oh we might actually cancel at lcs i don't even want that to be entertained I don't think anyone wants that to be entertained. I don't think Yes, you know who especially doesn't want this to be entertained? The players. Because when Thorin broke down all the the places where the revenue comes from and who is actually who is actually benefiting the most from LCS, it is by far the players. It is by far the fucking players of the LCS ecosystem. They are the most overpaid. It's 200% revenue to the fucking players of the league itself, not including food, not including everything else that would go into running a league just just player salaries and coaching salaries alone are 200 and don't get me wrong get your bag if someone offers you big ass contract take it that's on you right but it's the fucking health of the league is a mess 100 percent over 200 percent of the revenue of the entire league so it's like you guys are benefiting the most like if if lcs gets canceled like obviously everyone loses but lcs players lose the most I think Philip does because he actually genuinely cares about the players. You know, he is somebody that I mean, I think he's he's gonna do a great job. But like, why why even why even like I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a nuclear button. Like, why even have that as part of the equation? Everyone will just suffer. Like, the fans are not gonna be happy if LCS gets canceled. I know it's edgy to say like, oh yeah, just destroy the LCS. You know, down with LCS. But I don't think I don't think Double if gets it. Obviously not happy. By the way, that if all the players get, if, if LCS summary gets canceled, all the players lose their job for like half the year. We're not getting paid, by the way, for just sitting on our ass and playing. Solo That's the point. Stream on. Like, yes. We're getting paid to. Compete. That's the point. Yeah, I mean, I think people with the saying that I like sabotage the negotiations are uh, a little bit delusional about that. But uh, what? Yeah, I, like I said, I just, I just don't want that to happen. The LCS being canceled is like no one, no one wants that. Yeah. Also, people kind of took what i said as like obviously wait 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 why are you hating double lift he's right here what do you mean it doesn't matter that he's right it's like that's that's the whole point he he has he has a side he picked a side with his vote right he picked a side and now he's sabotaging his own side by telling the truth all of these things, right, in terms of the LCS, he could just say nothing. Agree with, or like the the players weren't in, uh, like a part of the discussion for uh, the demands or f for the negotiations or for like the talking points. I think all 50 players showed up in solidarity with... To okay, so uh, we'll let him finish this point. stand with Phil. Okay, so the what do you mean he's done the right thing? How is this the right right thing? How is this the right thing? On, on what planet is this the right thing? On what planet is this the right thing? So basically, he acted in his own best interest, right? And that's okay, right? And that's perfectly okay. But the whole point, right, is that they were supposed to walk out together. And he basically said, well, if this is going to happen, then I'm going to give up on the strike. And it might be true, like he might be, he might be saying what every player thinks, right? He might be saying what every player thinks, but at least it's like, it's a difference of, so let's say, let me give you the example, right? So imagine this, okay? So we, we are currently playing, so right now, Riot is holding Ace Ace, okay? This is their poker hand, okay? Texas Hold'em. And they're holding ace ace. Okay? They're holding ace ace. Pre flop, they showed their response, right? Pre flop, they showed the response. They're like, we're gonna raise. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna fucking uh, four bet. We're gonna we're gonna raise pre flop. Because our hand is fucking strong, by the way. We don't give a shit about the LCS. That's what they said. The LCS PA is off suit. Off suit 2 7. And basically here. They call to see the flop, okay? But pre-flop, you know what Doublelift does? He says, 
guys, we are holding 2-7, okay? We are holding 2-7, and yeah, we're holding a 2-7. That's what he did. Obviously, this analogy doesn't work super, super, super uh, well, right? It doesn't work super, super well because it's the idea of, like, reading how the hand is played. But th th basically, he says out loud, we are holding 2-7, guys. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's a mess, yeah? And it's like, the flop is this. L like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like our boy in the chat said. <laughs> well, the thing is, I don't think it might have, like, I don't think, I don't think that he is, I don't think he's going to change the outcomes. I don't think he's going to change the outcome because everyone had the same conclusion. When, when Riot said, yo, we're going to cancel the LCS if uh, we don't reach a conclusion after two weeks, then uh, everyone knew it was done. I knew it was done. Dom knew it was done. Everyone knew it was done. I was like, there's no fucking way. Like, if it, the moment the players even hear the words of this, done. Finished. And also, the demands, finished, done. It's like, when Riot did the response, they were clapped. They were clapped. Reddit is, I don't even go on Reddit anymore, man. Reddit is so delusional. It's insanity what, what's going on there, man. That's, that's crazy, dude. Uh, the League subreddit, guys? Jesus Christ. That is a mess. Players showed up to stand with Phil, which I even feel like is, is a weird way to phrase this, where it's like, Phil is going to war and us players, we stand with Phil. It's like supposed to be that like the players have an interest and he's just organizing it and he's acting on behalf of the players. Oh, this it is seems very like true. Phil convinced the players of the, uh, the fact that this was a good idea, that this was a, a time where they would be able to actually get something done. And people were like, go get him, Phil. We like it. But the reason why everyone said that you know he's against phil or that they were disappointed um or that that he was you know against phil's list of demands is because in the last video he spent the first 20 minutes of the video talking about the list of demands and how he was disappointed when he saw the list of demands so like did, did you not see them before they went live did you just stand with phil and then phil came up with the list of demands and then he sent them to riot and then you found out at the same time of everyone else it's unclear the timeline here but if you weren't happy agreed this is so weird to me it's like double its video it's like in a world in a world where it's like i i think things are already looking really damn grim from the day one that they've set their demands for lcspa right and additionally, right, if, if the players didn't know the list of demands before they were announced, that is extremely fucked up in my opinion. Like, what the fuck were they voting on? It's like, we are walking out for what? If they didn't know the list of demands, it's like, we're walking out because these are the demands we want to set. If they didn't know, that is insanely fucked. In my opinion. They knew the demands because they came out one week before the vote. Okay, that's a good point. That's actually a good point. Maybe I'm just goofing here. That could be that could be true. Let, let, let's check. Let's check. That is that is a that is a that is a good uh, good shout. That's a good shout. Let's let's check the timeline. That is a good point. That is a very good point. Because then that clears it up. So the May twenty third, May twenty third. That was before the vote, right? That was before the vote. Okay, okay, fair, fair. Okay, that's fair. But now with what Double have said, now I'm just confused. Because Double have said he didn't agree with them. Why they vote if they don't agree with the demands? It's worse than. <laughs> it's worse! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so he didn't agree with any of the demands. He thought they were all garbage and he, ag he agreed to walk out. If you're, if, you're, if you're holding a strike, I think the list of demands is very important, right? So, so let's say a world, right, where the demands were achieved. Let's say all the demands, in an in a, in a imperfect world, let's say all, all these demands were, were set. Is Double if going to continue striking then? He's like, yeah, I'm going to continue striking, guys, because my demands weren't met. But your, your list of demands is pretty, pretty important, in my opinion. So... The demands were public, and the vote was made with the accordance to those demands, and my, my boy WFT just completely disagreed with them. With the, the points 
if you weren't happy with the list of demands, like why was that list of demands sent? Like I, I don't understand it. Basically, like we all, overall majority, not all, but overall majority voted because we believe in Phil, whose last name is Aram, and I will not stop bringing uh -huh. him up. Because I think, and I think a lot of <laughs> because we believe in Phil, bro. Like, <laughs> what, what does that even mean? We believe in Phil. How twisted is that, man? What, what does that even mean? What does that even mean? We believe in Phil. It's it's not like when people are in positions, right? It's no longer about believing or not believing. It's about ideas. <laughs> it's such a weird way to phrase it, man. Like, isn't it supposed to be that you guys are outraged at what is happening to your fellow players in Academy? And that's why this whole thing is going on. Not that you guys believe in Phil. It's like we decided to show up in solidarity with Phil because Phil loves Academy and we love Phil. It's just weird, man. Really smart guy who will handle the negotiations well he's someone we put our trust into to do a good job so i don't know how people took that as like i don't agree with like philip or like i think that he is like doing things without putting uh the discussion on the table with the players because Be really well because you you don't agree with any of the demands in the list that you went over that that is literally why you don't agree with the demands in the list so how did those demands come to be? Did you agree to the walkout and then he put the list of demands together? Did he show up with the list of demands to a meeting and you're like, wow, those are all dog shit. Guys, I, I don't know who else is in the LCSPA. I don't know the structure of that, right? It's like Philip is the, like Mr. Aram is the outwards face, the outwards person. He's speaking for the LCSPA. He's basically managing it. He's the one that is going to, like in my mind, how it is how i view it is that he is responsible with that being said right there is no way like the players do you think the, uh, the players sat down and wrote this list of demands it had to be philip who else of course it was it was, it was philip maybe he had involvement on players maybe he didn't who, who else was it like send them off and then he's like all right or did he just like act without the interest of the players and he like showed it and then the players were like we hate those and he's like well i'm bringing them to riot anyway what was the fucking order of, of things happening here how did this fucking happen if you if you agree with phil and and like you know the situation was you know a, as clear as you're trying to make it seem that's number one okay let's go into this why do i not trust phil well there's, it's more than just, I know people are trying to phrase it as like, Dom just watched some YouTube videos and he's just a Redditor like the rest of us. And he watched some YouTube videos and he didn't like bro, Phil. In bro, Dom knows everyone in North America. You think Dom is like, like the, the crazy thing is, is like Dom knows everyone in North America. From rioters to casters to players to coaches. When he says something... He does it very carefully. I call this the Thorin method. The Thorin method is Thorin has information, a lot of players and people, that is not available publicly, but he positions himself with the help of that information. And then when the time comes, there is a massive payoff. Because obviously, he's not going to leak things that people tell him in confidence. But he has that information in the back of his mind. And he's never he has integrity, right? He would never leak anything. In the YouTube videos, and that's why he's flaming him. Yes, that was the first... Uh, when I saw him talk, and I first heard that he was clueless, and he obviously didn't understand how Academy works. He didn't know the amount of teams in Academy. He didn't know the teams that were coming in, who Team Fish Taka was, where they came from, if they played really... Oh, yes, I saw all that stuff, and I immediately thought, hmm, this guy looks a little sus to me. I feel like these are things he should probably know. Let me use my source my source and network yes that i have from existing in esports as an lcs player for years as a pro player before that i've worked in organizations i've been a streamer for tl i've been a streamer for c9 like i know people within the industry and i went and i learned how this process happened so i spoke to a combination of broadcast talent team owners gms players and journalists within the scene I tried to cover pretty much all of my bases, tried to hear from all fronts. 
And the way that I surmised that this situation went down is that Phil individually contacted each one of the teams and essentially leveraged teams that co-signed the idea of a walkout in order to get other teams to then be like, yeah, we're going to do the walkout too. So you would go to team number one, be like, hey. Bro, this was a House of Gods episode, by the way. When Kevin Spacey was the house whip. Uh, we need to count the votes. Hey guys, I think this is a really good idea. Like, we're going we're gonna to do this walkout to support the academy players. And they're like, oh, well, I don't know, Phil, this seems kind of crazy. Like are you sure that this is a good idea and he's like hey man like well this is a federally protected right and they're like oh if it's federally protected i guess we'll end up doing it and then what he ended up doing was being like okay team number one signs on 100 thieves is willing to walk out goes to the next team hey i just spoke to 100 thieves the first team i talked to they're willing to walk out you should walk out too and essentially that's how everyone ended up going through this idea of we're going to vote for a walkout so it's the same way that politics works sure the vote might have been anonymous at a point but everyone was on board with what was happening. Everyone knew that their job was to show up and vote yes on, on the walkout when the actual walkout came. That's what I've surmised actually happened. And it's one of those things where if you think about like the pro players, you think about the pro players, Doublelift doesn't know what the fuck this walkout is. He makes it abundantly clear in the last minute and 40 seconds of this video. You think the import players that are hearing it through a translator know exactly what a walkout is? If you're going to do something like this, the most honest way to do it is to go through every single thing and explain it like you're explaining it to a child that has never learned anything about unions, walkouts, uh, denial of labor, anything. You have to start at the beginning. What is a walkout? What is the goal of this walkout? What are potential responses from Riot to our decision to yes. walk out? Then the last question, which I'm sure that, that, that no one was on board with, that they didn't end up asking, is... What do we have to be willing to sacrifice, worst case scenario, if yes. we're willing to walk out? If he went to all the teams and said, hey, for us to really get this done, you have to be willing to sacrifice your career in LCS. You have to be willing to sacrifice your salary for Academy players. If that was what they were signing up for originally, you're not going to get 90 fucking votes. You're not going to get 93 votes. You can hear in Double's video that he just says, yeah, we'll just fucking give it all up then. This is what you need to do in order to, to actually just become like to be honest about the situation. But of course, it's one of those things where everyone gets in a Discord call and he starts reading off his bullet points. He starts going through his political jargon of, it's time for us to get out our bully pulpit, guys. And then they're like, oh, okay. Like, then he starts hitting, oh, it's a federally protected right. Oh, federally protected, I'm protected. Like, he starts going through all of his things and it's like, any questions? And no one w wants to fucking speak up because you don't want to seem like an idiot in front of everyone else. It just is what it is, man. Honestly, I think that all the players are so fucking smart. They just wanted to delay the start of the LCS for two weeks and they just played along and uh, they played along and now uh, they got the two weeks off and they just played along and now they're just going to go back to play. They saw the Diablo 4 release date. They saw that C9 and Golden Guardians played MSI and it will start way too quick. They, they did it for two weeks off and now Doublelift is tanking it. He's tanking it. Uh, basically, all of the players got together and they were like, yo, Doublelift, can you just go out and publicly just murder us? Please, do it. Like, the only argument in favor of what Doublelift has done is... Is that... Is that I think probably it would, it would be played anyway, you know? It would be played anyway. And now, the LCSPA as well, they have a perfect excuse. Yo, double the fuck does. That's why we couldn't make anything done. It's just 4D chess. It is what it is. It is what <laughs> it is. What uh, it he's is. always like in contact with me, other players. Every, every LCS player, every LCS team has like open communication with him constantly. So I think he's doing a really good job. And I don't know. I saw some comments about how like uh, what I'm saying corroborates with what Dom is saying. And I, I took a look at what Dom was saying about Philip about how like he's operating like. So Philip lied to. I don't know if he. I don't think he lied to players. I just think that the players like you could go to a player and be like, "Hey, let's do a walkout." 
and the, like and they're, and they're going to be on board with like a bunch of the ideas you have but you actually have to break things down to the most basic level yes. are you willing to sacrifice your career for academy players 100 percent true it's like i i could see if i were to convince players i would say guys this is a very positive thing for you guys we're going to protect your futures uh we're just going to uh protect the guys below you too there's going to be maybe uh situations in the future where you'll have to play an academy and you need to make sure that you have rights and then that's it you know it's like the way the way you explain it and the way you sell it in order to convince someone the the honesty behind it needs to be super super clear because I'm pretty certain, even though Doublelift said this publicly, I think 99%, it's like 100% of the, the players uh, don't want to cancel the LCS split. They're not willing to do that. Because if that's not what you're willing to do, we probably won't have leverage in the situation. The only leverage we have is denying our labor don't to the LCS. Me, yeah. We're not part Dumb of the franchise. Boy. We have nothing else that we can do to, to coerce Riot into doing what we want. That's it. Without the player's consent. Like, I think he didn't know the players were that stupid. Maybe. But it, it, the, at the end of the day, you just need to actually get get down to the base level. You think, pro, especially when you're dealing with people that come from different countries, right? Like, you don't know if they understand what the labor laws are like in the United States, what you're even doing in this country. <laughs> like, you have to go through translators and everything. You would need to break it down to an extremely basic level for people to understand. Listen to what Doublelift says and tell me he understands what the walkout is in the next minute. Let's just watch this. I don't know if that's true. They can still do stuff during the LCS season. They still have some leverage. I think, I think most most LCS players really like. What do you mean? Believe. Do stuff, but not get paid. Play some wonky ass fucking normal games that uh, Riot can kill any moment they want. Riot is God, judge, jury, executioner, your gardener, the plumber. Like, in in the Riot world. Even him, and that's why we took a stand with him. Yes. Like, we showed that's, solidarity. Yeah, like, I 100% believe leader that. Behind everything, behind the walkout, behind like... Have you seen the, the Scara clip where he predicts all of this? Guys, everyone said that. What Scara said back then, everyone said this. Bro, it was already happening in season one and two. Season season one and two, uh, like Riot was pushing out other games from from tournaments that they were involved in. They basically forced tournament organizer, organizers to choose. They were bullying uh, the space already back then. What are you saying, Riot is Johnny Sins? Showman. <laughs> People know that at any point Riot can just kill any League of Legends stream they want because they own the IP to the game. Yeah. Bro, I could get sniped. I could get sniped right now, dude. And I'll play Diablo 4 for the rest of my life and then Blizzard will lead me. You gave away your leverage. The only leverage you had is labor. If the only leverage I have... If the only, like, turning point in the negotiation is the threat of, like, exterminating the LCS for Summer Split and canceling it, then I don't even, like... I wouldn't even want there to be negotiations. So when I was watching this, I was actually watching this like, and I was talking to Thor at the same time on Discord. And the, the thing that I was burning to ask was like, what other leverage is there? So I was so fucking happy when this guy, and I'll move my camera so you can see his chat. Saying Bro, dumb, you're following me, mate. I was so fucking happy when this random chatter asked him, what other leverage do you have? Because that was my main question. Because that's so crazy. Like... 50 people will literally not have a job. All the LCS orgs are going to have like super devalued. That the is the labor strike. <laughs> look, look at sacrificial Yoshi. Sacrificial with an A, bro. <laughs> I respect that. That's what a strike is, Keck W. <laughs> Philip is the new world leader. <laughs> bro, stop. Which is, sorry, yeah, everyone. Like, we just will That's not labor have a negotiations, That's baby. Crazy. Like, then I'm why vote for a strike? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone wants that to be uh, the leverage. You don't understand how a walkout works. <laughs> and then there's just an aware. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I think it shows it. Okay, here, here's the question. Here's the question. Okay, let's recenter. McDonald's angle fast. 
what other leverage is there? I mean, I think it's. <laughs> you know, but... This is where he realizes he's like, what the fuck? What else? What other leverage do we have? And then listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. This is crucial. Overall majority players with what other leverage is there? I mean, I think it shows that overall majority players would walk out on the LCS. I didn't think that's anything. denial of labor. Yes, that's what it should. Like. He's like, what other leverage do we have? It's like, we're walking out. It's like, that's the denial of labor. That's that was the leverage. You couldn't even think of another. He thinks like walking outside, going for a walk. Maybe a walkout is like going for a walk. <laughs> It's actually, what are we saying? It's a piece of leverage. You couldn't think of anything else. Dude, Double is so impossibly stupid. It is so crazy to me <laughs> what he is saying. Like, it's, it's like he's just talking because he wants to pretend like he, he understands what he's saying, but he doesn't actually know what the fuck he's saying. There's no way he actually said this, man. Arnold's angle fast. What other leverage is there? I mean, I think it shows that overall majority players would walk out on the LCS. I didn't think anyone was like, thinking that because we would refuse to play that the LCS would just be canceled indefinitely. That's crazy. Yes, <laughs> yes, no, that, that's what the idea, yes, that was fucking crazy. I thought it was crazy. Well, what did he think? Like, I, I'm genuinely curious. What did he think it was? What did he think it was? I thought we're not gonna play for one week and then we're done. I, 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 I just don't think he has thought this through. I just want to go back to streaming. Like, oh, look at that. Look at me. I'm in my, and Dom's recommended. Take a stand for something important. I just want to go back to streaming. True. I just want to Look, I, there's only one video here for Dom. Of course, bro, I watch your videos. Oh, Dom, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, Dom.